Hello, everybody. It is Phasmophobia Update Day. So, yeah, I know the official content creators got it yesterday or partners or whatever you want to call them. But today we got it. So let's go on ahead and go get over it. And uh, yeah, it's Phasmophobia Eventide version 010.0.0. Zero, zero zero zero. Well, let's go over here and go there. Let's take a look at this baby. There's a lot of wording. <laughs> so, yeah, Phasmophobia Eventide. Are you brave enough to become the new lighthouse keeper? Well, welcome back. We've got an update for you. Due to the size of this update, we have given it the version number of V0.10, even though the roadmap originally planned different content for that version number. The following updates planned in the roadmap will instead have increased version numbers, but the content and order of updates remain the same. Point Hope. Point Hope was recently refurbished by a young family seeking something unique to call home. Will be welcomed by a modern extension complete with hallway, closets, and down store, downstairs bathroom before entering the lighthouse main living room. Decorated with nautical knickknacks, she'll be faced with spiral stairs, cases, and round rooms, a first for ghost hunters. This new location features 10 floors, 12 rooms, and a unique layout, which will challenge players in new ways. You'll have to use different techniques for some of these pesky ghost abilities while playing on lower evidence game modes. Unlocks at level 15. I will say one thing. The uh, spiral staircase scared the crap out of me today. Uh, yeah, uh, there's going to be another video out later today. But yeah, it, yeah, I jumped. I, yeah, I had chills. Uh, progression. Several progression and equipment items have been adjusted based on community feedback. Player leveling and rewards. The required XP to level from 1 to 100 has been reduced by around 10%, making leveling faster. Players can now level up to 9,999 for each prestige. The required experience needed to level up between 999 and 9,999 will increase every level. Spending metals restricted is now category, categorized as a medium location, which will be interesting. That's, that'll be, that might actually make it played more. Increased rewards for correctly identifying the ghosts in medium and large locations. Mediums going from 125 to 150 and large 150 to 200. So that's nice. Dots, tier one's light range has been increased and I will say tier one was great today. Cause I'm actually like in the twenties right now on prestige 15 and the tier one, tier one dot used to be my least favorite piece of gear. Now I actually, now I'm fine with it. I was, it, I was finding dots so easily today and I would, in my, I think my first four games had dots. So yeah, very nice. Tier three scanning effect can be now be paused by interacting with it while it's rotating. This has definitely been a feature that we've been looking for, and I'm really glad we got it. Tier 1's needle will no longer flicker. Near or past the 5, that's good because there's a lot of ghosts. I got a lot of ghosts wrong, because I, especially when Tier 1 uh, came out, because I thought it was 5. Tier 3 ZMF 5 reading now plays a unique sound. That'll be fun once I get to that point. Firelight, increased visibility, light, intensity, and range for both Tier 1 and Tier 2. Tier 1 duration is gone, going from 3 minutes to 5 minutes. Very nice. Tier 2, 5 minutes to 10 minutes. I'll be honest, I really rarely ran into Tier 2 issues every once in a while, but usually I got my blowouts and all that before it went out. But it's still a nice change. Firelight igniters will now be extinguished accurately in heavy rain. For example, they will no longer be extinguished under house porches and inside small tents. Oh, good. Headgear, a custom key binding has been added to the controls page for turning on and off headgear. Very nice. Turning headgear one on and off will now play different sounds to help know each state, which state the equipment is in. Very cool. While within range of a ghost event or hunting ghost, tier three will now have visual interference. All tiers will now play as a new sound. Parabolic microphone, tier one's red light will now flicker when a sound is detected. And I did test this today. Any sound. It's not just a ghost sound. If you've got your, if the EMF goes off, it's going to pick up and the light just starts flickering, like it says, uh, but like dots, uh, spirit box, it picks up everything. So if you want to only see that light go off for a ghost sound, make sure you go turn everything off. Like, especially if you're doing like a no headset game, something like that. Uh, tier three can now receive sounds one floor above or below uh, the player using it with new UI to show which floor the sound is coming from. Oh, okay. That'll be cool. Because I know it used, the Parabolic used to do that because when I got my 25 Apocalypse 3 of uh, 25 difficulty, I actually got my Parabolic from the next floor, from the floor above. 
So I didn't I didn't even realize that that was gone. You get uh, you now have to hold parabolic microphones to turn them on and off. Okay. Thermometer holding down the use button while holding th uh, thermometer two or three will now continuously update instead of having to restart after each reading. Nice. Tier one now has ra randomization to make it consistent with the other tiers. Tier three, hold time has been reduced to 2.5 from three seconds. Tier three randomization has been reduced to make it more accurate. I know that was a big complaint with a lot of people, why they didn't use tier three. Uh, tripods and video cameras. Ghost will now throw the video cameras more consistently. Tripod one, 20 to 30. Tripod 2, 10 to 20. Standing medication, uh, tier 1 restoration time is decreased to 20 seconds from 30. Tier 2, 10 to 20. Tier 3 will not necessarily refill your sprint endurance in addition to keeping it full for 10 seconds. Yeah, I used tier 1 today and I noticed a significant increase of me getting my sanity back. Sound sensors, mute buttons have been added to each sound sensor's truck UI. Cool. Spirit box, uh, small environment lights such as lamps must now also be turned off to receive the response. Um, you now must hold the spirit box to use it with text-based voice recognition. And just if you have this question, Camp Woodwind, when you turn on the generator, you've got that one light going on. Spirit box still works underneath that. Uh, I actually tested that today, and I got my spirit and I got my spirit box response. And the light, and I was right underneath the light. Uh, UV lights, tier one and two have been swapped for better progression during leveling. Uh, I don't like this change. I'll be totally honest. Uh, I had to actually go back to tier tier one on my UV lights because I know people like the glow stick. I like being able to pick up my the tier, well, now the tier one UV and not have to go over to a window. I can just pick up the thing and point it. So let's go over to optimization. We've drastically improved the performance of several areas of the game, which will result in fewer stutters, higher FPS, and quicker loading times, especially on low-end machines. The number of fixes and optimizations would be too many to list, but the following have received the biggest adjustments. Photo and video cameras, shadows, the weather and sky effects, UI, physics, audio reflections, textures, and shaders are now streamed to the GPU to significantly reduce VRAM and RAM usage. Pit doors closed system has been completely overhauled to increase performance. Training. Lower the temperature of training to make the freezing temperature section much faster to progress. Reduced the amount of equipment to one in each room. You now have to get EMF 5 to get past the EMF room. Props will now get thrown more frequently in the EMF room. Replace the glow stick with the UV torch as per the, the tier changes above. In the ghost orb section, players will now need to be more accurate with the video camera to avoid accidentally completing the objective without seeing the ghost door. A new, new ID card badges can now be unlocked. Lighthouse Keeper, uh, 50 times in Point Hope, uh, Apocalypse Bronze, Silver, Gold. They're nice little badges. Players can now carry an igniter. Uh, a note, if you have already completed any of the Apocalypse Challenge, you will need to complete a single game of any kind to receive your new, your new ID card. You also get a pop-up after that game that lets you know that, hey, you have, you have unlocked whichever Apocalypse games you have completed already. Um, so yeah, my first point hope after that game, I got a pop-up saying, hey, you've got all the Apocalypse uh, badges. Uh, let's see, players can now carry an igniter in addition to three other items. This has been awesome, especially at the end game where you kind of want to have your flashlight, but you also want your camera, you want your say, uh, smudge stick and, the, and your lighter. That's been that's been great today. I my four hour stream. I was loving that change. Uh, non VR players can only carry one igniter at a time. Some of the flashlights igniters now have their own slot in the VR belt. When placing a tier one igniter in the slot, you won't be able to remove it again until all matches have been drawn. On this, by the way, it is um, if you mouse scroll your your equipment instead of hitting the Q, you will you'll. You know how every once in a while you mouse scroll and it would take you an extra mouse scroll to get to your next piece of gear? I ran into this a bunch today. It's now taking more than one sometimes. I think uh, it's been taking sometimes three mouse scrolls to get it to change gear. So just be aware. Unlocking a new reward that is not tied to leveling up will now show a pop-up on the mission summary screen. Uh, ghostwriting books now play new sounds when closed. Added Kate and Catherine to possible ghost changes. Our first names, ghosts can now leave single fingerprints on small lamps and TV remotes. I haven't seen this yet today, but 
welcome change. Changes, equipment. You can no longer swap inventory slots while taking a photo. I don't know exactly what that means. I think maybe like with the tier one or the tier two camera, because they're slow, you can't change to the next year. Like you can't take a photo and then switch really quick. I think I actually died because of that once. Removed flashlights from the hide and seek extreme as they were disabled from settings. Deja Vu Weekly now has UVT1 instead of T2. Glow in the Dark Weekly now has uh, T2 instead of T1. Asking the Ouija board bone location questions will now drain 20% sanity down from 50. Due to bone rewards not being included in the reward, reward multiplier. You know, I never thought of that, but that's, that's a very good move. Uh, lighting the summoning circle candle will not honestly end the setup phase. Ghosts. Uh, Non-ghost writing ghosts now close a book after throwing it. Ghosts can no longer interact with already knocked down paintings. Shades can no longer blow out fire resources or write in the ghost writing books if there are any players in the room to keep their strength consistent. Uh, this is going to be a fun thing to check if I think it's a shade. Improve the ghost ability to interact with closed doors. Improve Banshee AI targeting when they stalk a player. I wish to see the ghost will now limit your vision after the ghost event instead of before to allow you to see the ghost. Increase the sanity drain on on one of the ghost events to match other events. Environment. Paranormal paparazzi and hide and seek hide. Weekly changes now take place in Point Hope. Ooh, okay, that'll be fun. Drastically improved the sunrise visuals. If you haven't seen the sunrise on Point Hope yet, very nice. Turning on several light switches in a room, but not all, will now drain sanity at a reduced rate instead of the full sanity drain speed. Props that don't move when hit with another prop will no longer play. An additional impact sound. Oh, wait. Props that don't move when hit with another prop. Okay. Adjusted all weather, weather since distant fall color for better blend. Remove point hope teasers from all maps. Optimized assets across all maps. Lowered resolution for light cookies. Flashlight shapes, but increased resolution for skylight shadows. Move the green bowl and edge filled living room to help with the lamp interaction and new fingerprints. Tanglewood utility room door can now be closed correctly by the ghost. Medium tint windows now have correct closures on both sides. Audio. Uh, adjusted audio effects to help identify if sounds are above or below. Oh, that'll be fun. Sounds are one floor above are bass boosted and muffled. Sounds are one floor below will be more muffled and quiet. Oh, so that would explain it. Yeah, I was having some issues with uh, the ghost being below me in Point Hope. And I thought, and they were really, really quiet. Sounds that are two floors above you or below will have more extreme effects and volume reduction. Okay. The heartbeat sound will no longer be altered by reverb or other audio effects. Audio levels for the ambient room tone and Ouija board have been remastered to bring them in line with other sounds. Reduce the volume for the writing sound for Ghost Writing Book 3. UI. Difficulty, money, and prestige level pop level up pop-ups have received new images. Improved color accuracy of several UI components. Increase the width of the scroll bars in the shop to make it easier for VR players. Several ID card titles have been renamed and shortened. Changed interaction amount to activity level in custom settings to be better reflect what it does. Uh, fixes. Player. Player movement will no longer be affected by held equipment. This has been a this is a very nice change. I've tested it on a few things, and it's been really nice. Stamina recovery will correctly now start if you are still holding down the sprint button but not moving. There is no longer a visual glitch when rapidly equipment, equipping and unequipping the headgear. You can now change your sprint mode while in-game in VR. Fix several areas where VR teleport movement could not teleport to. Changing your sprint mode to hold from toggle on PC while sprint is toggled on will no longer keep you sprinting without pressing the sprint button. Remove sprinting FOV increased due to graphical issue. Ghost. Hanging paintings thrown by the ghost will no longer fall through the floor. The ghost and bone can no longer get stuck in several locations. Yuri can now use their ability on doors that are open at the start of the game. Ooh, nice. Demon and Banshee attempting to use their ability but failing will no longer add to the abilities used at. Ghost will no longer keep throwing the same object over and over and will instead choose more varied items. Hide and Seek Extreme now correctly has three evidence instead of only two. I was going to say, yeah, that we, I know it was two, but everything else with that, with that weekly... Was, a, was professional, except for that. Ghost event player detection will no longer include dead players if they didn't move after dying. Equipment. Equipment. Most your sister 2 and 3 detection sounds can now be heard consistently. Parabolic microphone 2 now displays the correct volume values. 
You can no longer get readings on the parabolic microphone when in the truck. Dots 1 and UV light 2 light will no longer stop emitting when placed in some areas. Changing the sound sensor size in the truck not only changes the area effect UI, it's so the equipment UI. Parabolic microphone will no longer pick up sounds when in the truck. EMF reader 1 will now point the needle closer to the EMF value instead of including the EMF values above and below it. You can no longer take multiple photos of the same EMF interaction by using your inventory to refresh the EMF spot. Headgear 2 will no longer be detected by the ghost when on if flashlights are disabled in custom settings. Okay, I get that. An active parabolic microphone will no longer muffle your audio when picked up while holding another item. All sounds... I wonder, so did... Does my headgear 2 count work when flashlights are disabled? I have to test that. Uh, let's see. All sound sensor tiers... Firelight Tier 2 are now more stable when placed in VR. You can no longer light other people's incense by physically moving a fire source into it. VR players can now consistently place a video camera on a tripod that is still attached to the truck wall. The Ouija board will no longer break when saying goodbye with zero sanity. Okay. Crucifix 3 will now be fully used for all players after prevents a cursed hunt. Extinguished matches will no longer light other objects. You no longer need to swap hands between each tarot card in VR. Grabbing, swapping props or equipment in VR will no longer set the wrong hand position rotation. Igniters can no longer be used if another player fully used up to fuel. Tripod 3 placement highlight is now visible when first placed. UI for text voice recognition will no longer get stuck if another player grabs a Ouija board while you're using it. All motion and sound sensor map icons are now accurately sized on all maps. Environment. How much we got here? Okay, we're almost done. Environment. The player and ghost will not correctly be detected when moving between different rooms and floors. This will make evidence gathering much more consistent. Uh, Camp Woodwind still still bites, by the way. <laughs> Steady Meadows. Uh, reverb sound effects will no longer turn off while moving around in certain rooms. Hippo Lodge cabin window fingerprints will be visible again. Remove several locations where the ghost could get out of bounds in Sunny Meadows. Remove a spot where the ghost could get stuck behind the generator in Camp Woodwind. I've actually got a video on that one. The camping chair next to a lover's bench on Woodwind is no longer white. I have no idea why, th why this matters, but there it is. All overhead tarps on Camp Maple campsite now have rained sounds. Yeah, I had when I did Maple Lodge, the rain was, yeah, <laughs> I had heavy rain. It was loud. Reduced visibility of geometry seems where you can see the skybox and sunny meadows. Keys collected will now have the correct name in the journal. Window rain will no longer make the things black when viewed from certain angles. All brownstone high school windows and doors now have the correct fingerprint material. You can no longer place equipment in the gap under the cabin. Lights will no longer turn on if you turn them off during a flicker. Added skybox, block, block, uh, skybox blockers to multiple areas to stop tiny gaps in geometry that show the sky. Tanglewood, Edgefield, Review, and Willow. Sound, impact sounds will no longer play multiple times at once. UI, skipping the animation when you level up. More than once will no longer skip. The previous levels unlock pop-ups. Challenge map names will now be correct. You can no longer complete the ghost photo objective when there is no space for photos in the journal. Known issues. The ocean pathing can be inconsistent during hunts on Point Hope. Small items can occasionally fall through the walls and floors on Point Hope. Interactions can sometimes repeat multiple times. MSAA will cause visual artifacts while dead. If you experienced any issues, please join the official Phasmophobia Discord. And thanks. Good next games. So there you go. Um, I played Point Hope several times a day. It was, it's a lot of fun. I, I like the map. I haven't found a lot of glitches. Uh, one of the big things I got to do is find out where all the um, cursed items are. Because the only cursed item I know so far is the pentagram. Uh, I, I, looked, I looked in a couple of games and I could not find anything else. So yeah, so that's going to be one of those where I, I, you'll probably see a video later on this week uh, for the cursed items videos coming out this week are going to be this one. Then, um, I'm going to put the, it on friendly ghost and amateur. So I get all the hiding spots and, or actually just probably put it on friendly ghost and make all hiding spots shown. So then, and show, show off all the hiding spots. Then I'm going to take away all the hiding spots and show all the natural hiding spots. So that's two other videos plus the cursed item video. So at least you're going to have three more videos this week. So, so yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys didn't make sure you guys hit like, if you've not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm doing a lot more long forms nowadays uh, than shorts. 
So make sure you uh make sure you get you subscribe and click the bell if you want to you know be notified when I bring out new videos. Of I'm usually putting out one to three videos, long form a week right now. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And remember, I also stream on Twitch 8 a.m. to noon. Sometimes I go to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at basically this name, Wolfen, W-0-L-F-I-N-N. -N. Hope you guys have a great day and bye. Peace.